Hello, a very good evening. You're watching BBC News. I'm Jane Hill. We are staying with our main story here tonight on the BBC News channel. The news from Derbyshire. RAF helicopter crews trying to save a dam in Derbyshire amid fears it could burst and engulf much of the town of Whaley Bridge. The Chinooks are dropping bags of sand, gravel and stone to shore up the dam wall. Experts have described the situation as critical and about 1,500 people have been moved out of their homes in the area. The Prime Minister has said his thoughts are with them. Uh, as we have been saying for the last 20 minutes or so, we are expecting a news conference any moment. We are expecting to hear from the emergency services, the police, the environment agency. As soon as that gets underway, with all those latest details, we'll be back in Buxton for that. First, though, let's get this report from our correspondent, Laura Foster, who has spent the day in Whaley Bridge. And in fact, she referenced that news conference. Um, uh, the participants also, uh, have just evening, sat down. Uh, let's hear. We know we're going to hear from the police and the Environment Agency, among others. Gavin Tomlinson, Deputy Chief Fire Officer for Derbyshire Fire and Rescue Service. Julie Sharman, Chief Operating Officer for the Canal and River Trust. So this press conference concerns the ongoing critical incident at Toddbrook Reservoir at Whaley Bridge. The current situation is that throughout the day, emergency services, with the assistance and uh, the great help from partner agencies, have continued efforts to shore up the dam um, with the intention of improving the structural integrity. Um, in addition, we have also um, taken efforts to reduce the flow of water into the reservoir and also uh, pump water out to reduce the volume. We've had fantastic um, support from across the country. Ten pumps from the fire service are at the scene and further pumps are being installed uh, throughout the day and evening. By doing this, we have lowered the water level by half a metre and further pumps are en route to help lower the level of the dam. I must stress that the structural integrity of the dam wall is still at a critical level and there is still a substantial threat to life should the dam wall fail. So our plea is that we would ask for residents to continue to heed police advice and stay away from Whaley Bridge and we can give further updates um, as soon as we have them. Now we know that this has um, been very distressful for the residents of Whaley Bridge and I would like to um, say a big thank you uh, to them uh, because they have been really supportive. We've had officers visit every location um, and um, the majority have been absolutely fantastic, taken that advice and have been directed to safety. So anyone who has been displaced uh, but not attended um, the evacuation rendezvous point, which is at Chapel High School, can still do that. We would still urge uh, people to do that, attend the school. It's at Long Lane, Chapel on the Frith, at High Peak. Further to this, uh, we know that there's some um, real concern from the residents who have left their address, uh, and this can concern medication as well. So um, urge that anyone who does not have their prescription medicine available um, as a result of the evacuation, uh, make sure that they can get it quickly and easily uh, by calling the NHS on 111. Um, as this has been progressed, we know that it was critical to get people out of that area. In doing so, we know people have, uh, the residents have um, uh, left um, belongings behind that they would need, essential belongings, and also there's some real concern around animal welfare. Now, we have been, um, it's always been uh, in our mindset to be able to uh, inform the public how long this is going to take. It's really difficult. And until we get all the pumps in place to be able to make that accurate assessment, we're not going to know. But um, this is a, a very difficult decision that we've made, we've made collectively. Um, we need to consider um, the situation of the residents and we will be putting plans in place for residents to return to their addresses for a very short time, very controlled, um, to pick up really vital um, um, things that they need along with uh, the animal welfare that they can tend to. But this is very controlled, I must stress that, because this is very critical and it is still life at risk.
Local officers and partners have held a residence meeting, informed them directly because we believe that it's um, and right that the residents should hear that directly from, from us. Uh, I must stress that any resident um, who does wish to enter Whaley Bridge are advised that they do so at their own risk and that the risk to life remains high in the area. Any questions? that um, you'll be putting in plans for residents to return for a short time in a very controlled manner. Can you tell us a little bit more about when that's happening and how that's going to work? Yeah, so plans are being uh, put together at the minute. We know that we, or you'll know that we have a physical presence um, around that um, area where we don't want people to enter. Uh, it'll be very controlled in that we'll know, um, we'll be recording um, who enters. Um, we'll be restricting that to one person per household. Um, and we'll be giving clear instruction on how long the residents have got before they have to report back to us. And when is, that, is that happening? That's being worked through at the minute. What, so, so we don't know when that will happen, but no, we're working it through? No, the residents will be informed uh, when that's in place, but we, we are hoping to get that in place, of course, as quick as we can. Yeah, I'll have another one, sorry. <laughs> Laura from BBC News. Um, we have questions about the emergency discharge valves. Uh, are they, have they been fully opened and how have they been maintained? I think that's one for me. Um, um, I've had a few questions over the last sort of 24 hours about the operation of the reservoir. And the, um, the, the discharge valves at the base are uh, in relation to um, water supply. And I did ask my reservoir engineer earlier uh, specifically about this. And in normal use, the reservoir, um, in the condition of flood, the um, ancillary weir, which is the one which we've experienced a failure on, would be able to cope. So that the discharge valves wouldn't traditionally be used in day-to-day -day operation of the reservoir. And of course, immediately on um, experiencing the difficulties, uh, and in an effort to reduce any flow over the weir, that was when the emergency discharge valves were opened. Are they fully open? I believe so, but I, I, I haven't checked that, but I can't imagine why they would not be. Hmm. And how often are they maintained? Uh, regularly. Um, uh, they fall into the remit of the overall um, dam inspections, and so they will be inspected Frequently, I couldn't give you exact frequency, but it would be six months minimum. And I think there's a requirement to open emergency valves at least um, periodically as part of the uh, plan preventative maintenance of structures such as these. But they definitely weren't open before. No, I and mean, they would not be open before because their purpose is not to be there for the day-to-day -day operation of the reservoir. It's to do with drawdown and it's to do with feeder supply. So there's usually a feeder valve and, a, and an emergency drawdown valve. So in day-to-day -day operation, the ancillary weir would be the mechanism for dealing with severe weather conditions. Um, I'm from Greece, Arena, Manchester. You've described this as a substantial threat to life of the course. How much warning will you have that that is unfolding? Um, well, as you can appreciate, um, with um, um, the amount of uh, water that the reservoir holds, uh, if, the, if that dam gives, um, it will be um, uh, fairly quick, as you can appreciate. Um, plans are being worked through just around um, how far that water travels at what rate, um, but our key, um, uh, our key focus here is to get people out of that, uh, out of that, uh, that line of water. So we'll have um, officers, there is a plan just around that um, where officers will be able to alert but in terms of how quickly that uh, water displaces it's very difficult to, very difficult to say. So how, how have you reasoned that risk that then is associated with allowing the public back into their homes? Yeah. Is it that could take minutes to get somebody back out? So, We've been working um, uh, throughout the night since this was reported to us yesterday morning. Um, it's been constant. As you would have seen um, uh, that uh, with the military assistance that we've been able to um, reinforce to some extent 
um, the, um, the wall of the dam and also, as we've said, that we're also seeing a reduction in that um, in the volume there, but we have to balance it with, we know that there's real animal welfare there, we know that there's the public, the residents who need to get some vital belongings, and so that's why we are um, um, uh, reducing this to a very, very short time. That's controlled. We don't want people going in there and just, um, just staying there. It's controlled, we need them in and we need them out. So that's all well and good, but that is still ultimately then a controlled but calculated risk it's a really difficult decision, it is, um, but we know that, that we've got families, we've got residents there who are uh, absolutely distressed around um, uh, the, their, their, their pets, their animals that have been left at the address. It's not an easy decision, it really isn't. I'm Jameson, Syria, Manchester. Um, you mentioned that, that you uh, got the assistance of the military today. Is this something that you're going to be continuing for the next few days with the police? We'll be seeking help from the military as long as we need them, uh, and we've certainly had that support and that assurance. And um, obviously the RAF unit has been enforced today. What, what are the techniques you're going to be using to reduce the support? Um, we've currently taken some advice from the Royal Engineers um, to see if they can build some kind of temporary hard standing so we can get additional pumps in and around the reservoir, because at the moment, We've got the maximum amount of high volume pumps that we can physically fit in down, down the hard standing side. So we're looking at alternative ways to get additional pumps in. Because our priority has been to reduce the amount of water going into the reservoir, which we've done in partnership with um, certainly the RAF, the Chinook and, and the Mountain Rescue with the movement of sandbags. We have 10 high volume pumps now moving around 70,000 litres of water a minute out of the dam. Uh, and we're in the process of putting some additional larger pumps in there with the assistance of the RAF and the idea is that if the engineers can assist us and it's a feasible um, task then we'll put a temporary hard stand in and bring more high volume pumps in that we've actually got stood by at Buxton ready to go should we, we make that access available. Can you see that happening? Well that, that's down to the advice and guidance we get. But, but the, the priority now we stop the water going in is to remove the water as fast as we can from that dam. And the more pumps we can get to the work, the faster we can remove that in a controlled manner. If the valve is now fully open, I understand it should be done by a metre a day, get all the fire engine pumps are there, some of them down half a metre. What's going on? I don't know where you got the calculation from um, yeah. on that. On the that. Nice, okay. Well, I, I mean, the, we've got. Um, three reservoir engineers on site at any period during this emergency over the last 24 hours and we'll be through to the, the conclusion. So they are they're looking at inflows as well as outflows. So um, I don't know where the calculation came from and I can't comment specifically on that, but they are very focused on um, what's coming in and the volume of the pumps and the amount that we're removing it and calculations then about how long it will take to lower the levels in the reservoir. And we've got more pumps on site that we can currently use, so there's not a lack of um, equipment and, and materials. It's about fitting them in and getting them to work together to reduce the water level. In, in addition to that, it's been um, very complex trying to get 10 huge high volume pumps down narrow lanes and, and working into the dam. So th this has been um, putting one piece after another in place of the jigsaw, jigsaw throughout the night and throughout this morning. So it's only during today that we've actually got the maximum amount of pumps working and taking the maximum amount of water out that we can at this point in time. And I appreciate that, but an emergency valve would think would clear it out quite quickly. Um, so um, there's two things that Reservoir design and improvements are such that for, for, for many years now, um, uh, people responsible for reservoirs have to have emergency drawdown plans to deal with the removal of water much quicker than just what can be uh, coped with through, uh, through the emergency valve. So, so um, additional pumping it forms part of all of our emergency drawdown plans for our reservoirs and will be for any other undertaker that looks after reservoirs. Can I ask how... Um Confident or how satisfied you are, you know, the measures you should be going to implement overnight, and obviously today with the Chinooks and so on. Um, you know, how satisfied are you that they, those measures are mitigating the risk and, and you know, getting us closer to a stage where it's safe, but yeah. I assume still not because it's safe. Yeah, thank you. 
Um, so maybe getting a bit technical, but basically um, what we've lost is some of the um, spillway weir, and the concentration has been in two areas, lowering the level of the reservoir, which we've talked about, but also to protect the um, dam from further, further uh, erosion. And so adding weight to the front face where the material has been lost has been a key factor. So we've been taking expert advice from our panel reservoir engineers and our other reservoir engineers, and they've been um, directing um, the, the priorities on site. So um, I think that we are approaching it with doing all the things that we should be doing, getting that balance between lowering the water as quickly as possible and protecting the dam from risk of failure. What's the chance of saving now? I'm hopeful. Uh, but as you've already heard, um, this is still a very critical situation, I'm not complacent and until we are confident that we can control that risk, then our position has to be to protect the public safety um, and, and limit access because we don't want to, um, to put people at risk. Can, can I ask that any other questions have been one-to-one? Is that okay? Can I just ask one more thing, please? Um, the Derbyshire County Council have put a, or will be putting a helpline in, uh, and this is for all local people, local residents, and that will go live from 9 a.m. tomorrow uh, till 10 p.m. And if I could give that number out, please, 01629 533 190, and that's for all the local residents. Yeah, 01629 533 190. And that number will be manned by a team from um, around 8, 9 a.m. Uh, 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. So, can you just have a sort of sort of council saying, chance of saying that only 50-50? It's true that there's been um, those sort of percentages um, put around. I don't think they've come from any of the actual team working on the site because um, it's almost impossible to, to uh, assess a risk in that fashion. And so, what well, our message is, is that this, the dam is still critical and will remain critical until we can lower the reservoir levels below the damage on the front face. And that's the key priority for us on site. So how much do you have to take out on this? How much do you have to take out? I don't have the measurement figure in my head, but it's several metres that we need to reduce the level in the dam. And that's why you know, we think it, it could take a number of days to do that. I mean, So the latest there from the police, the Environment Agency and others, the police telling us that a substantial threat to life exists if the wall fails uh, and also crucially uh, Ken Mehmet, the Assistant Chief Constable of Derbyshire Police saying uh, perhaps the thing that residents uh, really don't want to hear that it is very difficult to say how long this is going to take. Uh, my colleague Ben Ando is with me and has been following the day's developments and you were listening to that news conference as well and it just gave us a sense, Ben, of the scale of the task here. Absolutely it did. I think a sense of the scale of the task, a sense of how little really they know about predicting what's going to happen and I think they're a clear indication that they have listened to what local people are saying. So what they're arranging is this um, controlled access they, uh, access, they said, for people uh, who, who have houses in the danger area. Pay many people perhaps who have pets in those houses, they said, they're particularly concerned about. Um, the Assistant Chief Constable said clearly some people were very distressed at having to leave their, their pets behind, so they're going to allow a one person per household, very limited controlled access. They did say it's at their own risk, but clearly uh, they felt they need to allow people to go back to their homes, possibly to get medication they may need, possibly to get those pets that have been left behind, while work continues to try to, uh, on three fronts really, they're shoring up the dam at the front to put weight in there, the stone that we've seen dropped in there from that helicopter mm. to try to um, strengthen the dam where it's been weakened by the failure of the concrete panels. They're also bringing the water level down with the use of these high pressure pumps and what they've also said is they've got more pumps on standby. The difficulty is because of lots of woodland around the edge of the reservoir is creating hard standing so they can get in there to, to work and increase the pace with which the water comes down. And finally they've also been using the helicopter to drop stone further up to try to 
stop or dam, if you like, further up water from getting into the reservoir. So there's things they're doing, but it's very clear that if that dam were to breach, they haven't really been able to model effectively what will happen. They just don't know. They don't know how quickly the water would surge in, what it would do, where it would go. That's something that's unknown, and that's why they're having to be so cautious. Yes, I mean, caution is absolutely the word, isn't it? They talked about the fact that the pumps that are there so far have lowered the water by half a metre, and the, the structural engineer and the experts that I've been talking to on this programme tonight, they make the point that things currently are in the emergency services favour the weather is right the conditions are right you know dry weather of course is what they need uh, but you just couldn't get away from the fact that i suppose perhaps i should be using the word unprecedented they kept so many of them at that news conference kept coming back to the fact that we we just don't know there's so many times we don't know how long this will take or, or what the future holds here and of course public safety be, have, has to be the number one priority that's absolutely right. I mean, fundamentally, what you're dealing with here is a very old structure. I mean, this structure is around, we think, 180-odd years old. It uh, came into use in 1831. What happens to structures like this over long periods of time when suddenly, out of the blue, they're uh, presented with a massive increase in the stresses and strains that are put on them, bits start to break away? That's what we just don't know. So we have to wait and see, really. In terms of the response from the emergency services, they have a clear plan. They know what they're trying to do. At the moment, it seems that time is with them. The conditions haven't worsened. The water level is falling. But at the moment, as we've heard, they still consider it to be critical. Yes, and when they talk about people going back to their homes, that, that, the, the, as you mentioned, only very, very strictly one person per household. And when you hear the police say, that will be done at your own risk, that just shows you the... Uh, the potential dangers here. I mean, of course, the emergency service is going to try and look after people as best they can, but the fact that he even used that phrase, I think, was so striking. Absolutely. I mean, they're talking of a high risk to life. It's very simple. It's very clear. There's nothing um, confusing about that message, is there? Very clearly, if the dam were to fail suddenly, it would be a catastrophic failure. A huge amount of water, millions of gallons, would suddenly flow down into this area below the dam where the town uh, lies. That is something they just, they just don't know what would happen in those circumstances, how quick it would be, um, how much damage it would do. Clearly there would be damage, but they don't know how much. In terms of allowing people back, they're taking the view that it's a manageable risk, obviously. They're saying to people, yes, it's at your own risk, but they've clearly decided that if you balance the distress of people, the need to get maybe emergency medications yes, to yes. get those pets against what the level of risk is, they've clearly thought, well, if we allow them in, in maybe, I don't know, tens or dozens at a time, a few people at a time, they're going to sort of sign them all in and sign them all out again. They said they'll keep tabs on who is in the area and give them a fixed period of time they're allowed in there for before they have to report back, presumably, to the cordon on the outer edge of the danger zone. So it's going to be very, very controlled, I think, was the phrase that was used repeatedly. Yes. Um, very managed to make sure they know who is in that area and they're in there for the minimum amount of time to do what they need to do, which is get that emergency medication maybe rescue any pets that were left behind in the in the very speedy emergency evacuation of the 1500 odd people that took place before when the dam first collapsed yes all right ben for now thank you very much indeed ben ando following all the day's developments for us as is our correspondent laura foster who is there at the scene and of course was also listening to that news conference and we know, Laura, that uh, lo local people, all those people out of their homes have been spoken to by the police and the emergency services tonight. But it does sound as if they're certainly not going to get news that they want. They're not, uh, they're not going to be sleeping in their homes anytime soon. That's how it seems to be. Yes, it's certainly not the news that they were hoping to receive. They were actually told by the emergency services what was happening in a residence meeting before the media. This press conference has just finished. And during it, despite all the work that the emergency services have done over the last 26 hours or so, the situation, it, the structure is still very critical and there's still a risk to life. Residents are being advised not to go back to Whaley Bridge. But simultaneously, they are look, the emergency services are looking at ways in which they can let one member of the family back in for a short period of time to gather essentials, and pets, medication, that sort of thing. What was interesting is that over the last 26 hours, they've managed to reduce the level, the water levels on the dam by about half a metre. But what they've said to here is that they're hopeful of saving the dam, but they still need to lower it by several metres to take that water level below the problem that's on that spillway before the engineers can be confident 
that Whaley Bridge would be safe to return to. And as you alluded to, the weather is on their side right now. We're not sure what the weather will hold over the next few days, but obviously everyone's very hopeful that they'll be able to go back to their town, but no one was making any promises. There was a lot of talk about days, um, but again, it depends on so many things. They've got to get these extra uh, high volume water pumps in. It's tricky given the, the uh, layout of the area around, all these little Derbyshire winding roads and lanes, but they'll be working really hard to do that. Laura, thank you so much for now. The very latest there from Buxton in Derbyshire following on from that news conference. And of course, we are keeping you up to date throughout the evening here on BBC News as that emergency operation continues. And as the police said tonight, just in the last few minutes, they just don't know how long that is going to take. We'll have coverage throughout the evening here on BBC News. So do stay with us for all the latest updates. A full news bulletin coming up from seven o'clock, of course. We'll just pause for now, though, here on BBC News. We'll catch up with all the latest sports news. Here's Sports Day.